Okay, everybody, we've saved the best for last. This is the Coup de Gras. Altered wheel base 65 Dodge Coronet. So, did you buy it like this? No, this was a standard wheelbase six cylinder body when I got it, just a shell. And I converted it over to be a replica of the 65 altered wheelbase Hemi AFX drag cars. And I wanted it streetable. I'm going to step back here so people can get a full effect of how much movement there was. Now, what are the exact dimensions of how much the back and front wheels move forward? The back wheels were moved up 15 inches stock, and the front wheels were moved up 10. So actually it is a 5 inch shorter wheelbase, but the wheelbase has been shifted radically forward. And the rear springs and the front tape frame can't be moved another 16th of an inch. It's as far literally as they can push them. So the overhang here is to give you more weight distribution. The problem back in the mid-60s with the pie crust slicks like the other station wagon had, the rubber compounds were really hard. It was the best they had in the day. But these cars had way more power than they had traction. So by moving the wheels forward, it gave it more rear overhang weight. But the big thing is by moving the front wheels forward, it's the same as pushing the engine back. Okay. So you take basically a 600 pound Hemi and move the wheels forward, it was like having it under the windshield, weight distribution wise, which led to more traction. So that's why they did it. Wow. So, you say you took a perfectly good car. Yeah. And you <laughs> cut, cut it all to pieces. Yep. Now, if that isn't brave, I don't know what is. Well, we put it on a drive-on lift to act as a chassis plate, so we had a perfectly level surface. We blocked up the car, leveled it front to back, side to side, because it's literally measured ten times, cut once. Yes. We welded the car to the lift. Okay, so now it's not going anywhere. So now it's not going to deflect. And it was just like we picked the car up and put it on a table saw with a dado blade and ran a 15 inch wide cut right to the side of the car from side to side. And we ratcheted the rear end with the leaf springs forward to locate the front mounts and measured to make sure the rear end was square and everything before we tacked it. So literally, the chassis builder and I'm on the other side of the car and we're looking through this huge groove right through the side of this car. And I'm thinking, oh my god, totally what did now. I do? <laughs> what did I do? I just ruined this thing. Well, I'm in the deep end of the pool now. So we built the car, got the whole rear end squared away, moved the sheet metal, spring perches. We had to piece in another frame rail behind the rear end because you moved it forward. So you not only to change ahead of the rear end, you change behind the rear end. stayed the same, and the factory made torsion bars 10 inches longer than the stock one. Nowhere to be found. Right. Didn't want to use a coil over front end or a strut front end or even a straight axle front end. I wanted torsion bars. So I was out at the Mopar event in Las Vegas, and I bumped into a guy that had done it. And I says, how on earth did you make this happen? He says, it's blindingly simple. He says, move your torsion bars and K-frame, and he says, find two pieces of hex stock, 10 inches long, slide it in from the rear behind the torsion bars, get another torsion bar rear mount, and weld it together. So the torsion bars think they're 10 inches longer, the mounts are 10 inches longer, and the rear torsion bar mount and the K-frame so you maintain the parallel so they're not twisted. You get the length, the 
without any distortion and tear loose and anything, and it'll rip stock. I flew home and we did it the next day, and it worked beautifully. This car going down the street drives and handles just like it was a stock sedan. It's not twitchy, it's not squirmy, it doesn't dart around because of skinny tires in the front. Take a more detailed look at it. We're going to get a close up. He's going to give us some under the hood. We're going to take a look at the inside. I'm even going to get down on the ground, look underneath this car to show you. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. Start. This is my 65 Dodge altered wheelbase car. It has a 528 Hemi that we'll take a look at in a minute. And let's walk around and take a look at the car. It's got a fiberglass hood, fiberglass fenders, fiberglass bumpers front and rear. It's got a glass windshield, plastic side windows and rear window. It's fully street licensed and legal. It's got one wiper that works. It's got headlights only single, like the A990 cars. High beams have been deleted. It's got American racing wheels and disc brakes. The factory cars had steel wheels and drum brakes. It's got steel doors. The factory cars had glass doors. This is a two-door sedan with the post. The Factory 11 were two-door hardtops, which were a little more modern styling, but these cars are stiffer and lighter. The doors are steel. It's got deja vu on it. So, what's the story with deja vu? Well, this is another David Crosby song, one of my favorites. It deals with past life theory, that we have all been here before. And this car was built and finished about nine years ago. And it harkens back to 1965. This car in spirit was built in 1965, but in reality was built and finished nine years ago. So we have been here before. And it's one of my favorite songs of his and it really ties the car to two generations and me as a 16 year old kid and me as at the time a 62 year old kid so that's the deja vu and a very dear friend of mine i don't know if you can get it she designed the lettering and if you look right here in very light gray you see diane bodak she did the graphic design for me for the doors. Plastic side windows, AMT model cars, mm -hmm. Super Stock Magazine, again, Drag Illustrated. This is the late 50s, early 60s Mopar logo before the today's M. <laughs> this was the old logo. Um, the rear wheels are moved up and if you get a side shot, the back tire, the back edge of the back tire is actually in front of the edge of the rear window. That gives you high, uh, how much of an idea the rear end and the back wheels are in the back seat. The Hennessy Motors logo, got a, have the shamrock. 
on the back it's got backup light deletes because backup lights are optional. My buddy that did the vinyl sign lettering, Bobby Meyer. Crosby stills and Nash again. The factory cars had fiberglass trunk lids. This is a steel one. Makes it a little more serviceable. And in the trunk, if I can find the keys, oh, they're in the interior. It's got a glass bumper. We'll look in the trunk in a minute. And on the bright sunny side, if it isn't too glary, um, you can really get an idea of how radically moved the wheels are. And it was all for traction. And it makes it very easy to back up because you can back right over the sidewalk and not hit the curb. It's really quite an amazing car to drive. It also has the plastic side windows, the seat belt strap, no armrest, no window crank, just the door pull. It has the super stock bucket seats like the wagons do, the aluminum seat tracks, no back seat, it's radio and heater delete. It, if it doesn't have to be on the car to make it run, it's not there. There is no extra weight or extra equipment to make the car heavier. It does have street legal lights and wipers and signals, but that's it. And exhaust system. Okay, so the exhaust system. I noticed when you were back in the car out of the car was fairly quiet. It's remarkably quiet, even with a 528 motor. It's got a three inch full exhaust system, mm -hmm. but as you come off the headers, the exhaust pipes go over the rear axle to the mufflers to the bumper. In a street car, the mufflers are underneath your feet in the back seat. Well, that's the section that you take out to move the axle forward, so there's no place for mufflers. So I put the fuel cell in the trunk, and the mufflers are underneath the fuel cell under the car, because otherwise there's no place for mufflers. And on a street car, you got to have muffler. So there's dual exhaust in the back, but just moving the mufflers back remarkably quiets the car down, even though it's a hundred inch bigger motor than the other cars. Okay. I'm going to take a little look underneath the car here. Uh, you want the door closed? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea to okay, so you don't keep me from banging my head on the way back up. Okay. We'll move to the back. Dana 60 rear end with 456 gears. It has four wheel disc brakes. The factory cars had four nine inch drum brakes, which were barely adequate on the street, let alone a race car. It has super stock leaf springs, torsion bars in the front, and the factory did it. So how long did it take to engineer this project? This was about a three year project. It actually moved along fairly quickly once we figured out the front torsion bar situation. It's a very basic, very simple car. And actually, you'll see in a minute under the hood, these are actually easier to work on than a street car like the Blue Savoy. Because all the stuff that's normally in the way is moved forward. Just for an example, to get the headers off of this car, as quick as I can loosen the 10 bolts on both sides, the headers will fall right on the ground. The other car, it'll take about four hours because you have to pull the torsion bars back and all that. These cars are a dream to work on. It's too bad they didn't make the production cars <laughs> altered like this is. Let's take a quick detailed look on the inside from the driver's side to look at the cage work and the dash and things like that. The cage is also to help stiffen it and it helped hold the car together while we cut it all apart to move the chassis work. It has a two button heater delete, a single horn button with no ring, which was the cheapest 
model Dodge, the 330s. It's got an aftermarket BM manual automatic transmission shifter, the super stock bucket seats, and the aluminum seat tracks. And if you look in the back seat, you can see it's basically full of rear axle and sheet metal. Pretty amazing. So, we have a Hemi. Yes, we do. This is a 528 inch Chrysler Crazy. And the tubes through the hood is an electronically controlled Hillborn fuel injection. It has hood hinges, but no springs. So to hold the glass hood up, I use my prop rod. This is a 528 crate motor, um, aluminum heads, hydraulic cam, um, aluminum water pump housing, TTI headers. This cable thing here is for the mechanical tack that drives off the distributor. Aluminum radiator, which the factory ones had little copper brass six cylinder ones. It's very docile on the street until you put your foot in it. And it's very much the way they were built in 65, only it's lower compression. This is 10 to 1 instead of 13 to 1 because it's got to be streetable on 91 octane pump gas. Also has single headlight grill, like I said, fiberglass bumpers. And uh, the toe tabs on the front are very typical of what they use tow the cars back down the return roads with it. And I use it to put it in the trailer when I travel for longer distances to hold the tie-down straps. It's got disc brakes on the front, disc brakes on the rear, um, street legal sort of ET street tires. They're basically big old cheater slicks and treaded front tires. So it's all legal, but it's marginal as far as Readability. It's certainly not something you would drive every day. It's a hot rod show car replica of race cars from another time. Because we have all been here before. 